In this video, I'll be discussing the algebra of functions. So I think of these as being pretty intuitive, reasonable, hopefully they make sense. So let's go ahead and look at these functions here. The first one, f plus g of x, is basically the new function you get by adding these two functions, f of x and g of x, together f minus g of x is a new function you get by subtracting the two functions. f times g of, g of x is the function you get when you multiply these two functions. And finally, f divided by g of x is the function you get when you divide these two functions. Now, notice g of x cannot equal 0. If it were 0, then it would make the expression undefined. We know we can't have 0 in the denominator of a fraction. So it says here the domain of f plus g, f minus g, and f times g is the intersection of the domains of f and g. I think of it as what the two domains have in common. So it's what the two domains have in common. So, hold on a second, uh, nope, I didn't do that. So let's go ahead and write that. What the two domains have in common. Now keep in mind, um, for f divided by g, we have to exclude any values that, of x that cause g of x to equal 0. All right, so let's do some examples. On number 1, we have f of x equals 3x plus 2, and g of x is equal to x minus 4. We need to find f plus g, f minus g, f times g, and f divided by g, and also find the domain all right, so f plus g of x, by definition, means f of x plus g of x. Well, what is f of x? It's 3x plus 2. And what is g of x? It's x minus 4. So we're just adding these two functions together. Now, when we add two binomials, because that's what we have here, each of these functions has two terms, we don't really need the parentheses because we just drop them anyway and combine like terms. But just because in other cases, in particular with subtraction and multiplication, you have to have the parentheses, I'm going to do it just because it's a good habit. So, uh, but still, all I'm going to do at this point is just combine my like terms. I've got a 3x and a 1x, which is 4x, and 2 and a minus 4 gives me minus 2, and so 4x minus 2 is my final answer. All right, I would encourage you to try B and then watch the video. All right, so you should have said f of x minus g of x. By definition, that's what f minus g of x is. And so now we're going to subtract these two functions. Now again, it's really important that you have parentheses here since we have subtraction. We're going to end up distributing that negative to each of these two terms. So I'm going to go ahead and drop the first parentheses and I'm going to distribute a negative 1. So negative 1x is what we'll get when we multiply there and negative 1 times a minus 4 will be plus 4. And now we're ready to combine our like terms. We've got a 3x and a minus 1x, which is 2x. And 2 and 4, of course, is going to be 6. And I don't know why I put a 2 there. Let me fix that. So that should be a 6. All right, let's... Now, before we move on, remember, we're also supposed to find the domain. So if you look at number one, or if you look at f of x, it's a linear function, and so is g of x. So they're both going to have a domain of all real numbers. Remember, at least for now, the only function that we have 
that doesn't have a domain of all real numbers is rational functions, where you have a fraction. In particular, you have a variable in the denominator of a fraction. All right, and uh, so now, what do these two domains have in common? <laughs> well, everything. So our domain is going to be all real numbers. They're both the same, same domain. What do they have in common? Everything. So same thing for the other one. Let's go ahead and move on to the next problem. Actually, C, D, E, and F here of, of part one. I should say a problem one. <clears throat> All right, so I would encourage you to try C and D, and you might even see if you can figure out how to do E, and then watch the video. All right, so on C, F times G of X means F of X times G of X. All right, so f of x is 3x plus 2, and g of x is x minus 4. And so you can see we're going to multiply a binomial times a binomial. Now when we do this, we use a process called foiling, or some people just think of it as the distributive property. But the main thing I want to make clear here is if you don't have these parentheses, you're, you're going to have a hard time getting a right answer out of that. You need the parentheses. And so now I'm going to FOIL. I'm going to, so F is for first, the first terms. O is for the outside terms. I is for the inner terms. And L is for the last terms. That's what I mean by FOIL. So 3x times x is 3x squared. That's my first terms. My outer terms would be 3x times a minus 4, which is minus 12x. My inner terms, or my inner product, is going to be 2 times x, or 2x. And my last product will be 2 times negative 4, which is negative 8. And of course, we have some like terms here. We'll combine our minus 12x and 2x to get minus 10x. And then don't forget about the minus 8. All right. And the domain is still all real numbers because we still have a domain for f and g that is all real numbers. So just like the last two that we did. All right, let's go ahead and do D. So by definition, F divided by G of X is F of X divided by G of X. So F of X is 3X plus 2, and G of X is X minus 4. Now remember, we said that G of X, or the function in the denominator, can't be 0, can't equal 0. What that means here, notice if x were 4, we would have a problem. x cannot equal 4. Or the other way to say that is g of x cannot be 0, and it would be 0 if x were 4. So in this problem, we're actually done. Uh, let's see. I guess I didn't. Hold on a sec. Let me just circle or uh, square my answer here. And then um, you have to ask yourself, um, well, first of all, we know f and g, what do these two functions have in common as far as their domains? It would be all real numbers. However, we have to exclude any values that cause g of x to equal 0, any x values. And so our domain is going to be basically everything except 4. So negative infinity to 4 union 4 to infinity. That's how we basically write all real numbers except 4. All right, on E, we know that f plus g of x is equal to f of x plus g of x. So the difference here is instead of having an input, a general input of x, we have an exact input of the number 2. And so this is just going to be equal to f of 2 plus g of 2. So I'm basically just replacing all these x's with 2. All right, so the thing is, we know how to find f of 2. We just plug 2 into the f function. Now notice with the f function, we triple our input and add 2. So 3 times 2 is 6. 6 plus 2, we're going to get 8. Now g of 2, we're going to plug 2 into the g function which takes your input and subtracts 4. Well, 2 minus 4 is negative 2. So we said f of 2 was 8, and we're going to add that to g of 2, which was negative 2. And so we get 6. Now, some people like to show their work, the work that I just did here, 
right in this area here. But um, I find that it's easier to do it off to the side. It tends to help some students avoid some confusion because sometimes they, they end up making mistakes because they're putting all the work within the problem. All right, on letter F, I would encourage you to do this one if you didn't already try it on your own, and then watch the video. All right, so we're going to get, well, we know F times G of X is equal to F of X times G of X. That's what F times G of X means. And so if I just replace my X's with negative 3, we can see that F times G of negative 3 is just f of negative 3 times g of negative 3. Well, again, we can find f of negative 3. It'll be 3 times negative 3 plus 2. That's negative 9 plus 2, which is negative 7. Now, g of negative 3, remember, it's the g function now. It'll be negative 3 minus 4, which is negative 7. And so notice here we're going to get negative 7 times negative 7 which is 49. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the next slide. So on problem number two, you're basically getting some more practice of the things that we've already done. And, and really, in the same thing with three, it's just you're finding the domain. Notice you don't actually have to find f plus g, f minus g, and f times g. You're just finding the domain. So I would encourage you to try these two problems and then watch the video. All right, so f plus g of x, we know is f of x plus g of x. Well, f of x is x squared minus 2, and g of x is 3x plus 4. So we're going to add these functions together. And again, I didn't really need the parentheses with addition. But again, with subtraction and multiplication, you'll definitely need the parentheses. So notice I've got my x squared term, a 3x term, a negative 2, and a 4 is going to give me, well, let's see, we have x squared minus 2 plus 3x plus 4, and so we'll end up with x squared plus 3x plus 2. All right, on letter B, the first step is writing that as f of negative 5 minus g of negative 5. Now, let's find f of negative 5. Let's see, we're going to square our input and subtract 2. Well, negative 5 squared is 25, and 25 minus 2 is going to give us 23. And then uh, g of negative 5 is going to be 3 times negative 5 plus 4. That's negative 15 plus 4, which is negative 11. And so this is going to be 23 minus negative 11. Now be careful here because we're subtracting a negative. So this becomes 23 plus 11, which is 34. All right, on letter C, we're finding f times f of x. So we're actually going to rewrite this. Remember, this, is, um, this means f of x times f of x. Well, we're just going to multiply x squared minus 2 times itself. And this is another situation where we're going to FOIL. We'll multiply our first terms. We get x to the fourth. Our outer terms, we get minus 2x squared. Our inner terms, we get minus 2x squared. And when we multiply our last terms, we get 4. So we'll combine our two middle terms there that are like terms. We get x to the fourth minus 4x squared plus 4. On a d, by definition, this means f of 2 over g of 2. Now, f of 2, if you plug that in here, you're going to get 2 squared minus 4. That's going to be 4 minus, I'm sorry, 2 squared minus 2. That'll be 4 minus 2, which is 2. And if you plug in 2 into the g function, it'll be 3 times 2, which is 6, plus 4, and you get 10. Now, if you need to write that out, then write it out. But we end up getting one-fifth here. All right, so on the last problem here, we're just finding the domain. So we need to find the domain of f and g, and then we need to see what they have in common. So 
for f of x equals 2x over x minus 3, our domain is everything except 3, because 3 is a restricted value. It causes our denominator to equal 0. So our domain is negative infinity to 3, union 3 to infinity, which again just means every real number except for 3. If I plug in 3 as an input, I would be undefined. Now g of x is quadratic. We know linear functions and quadratic functions have a domain of all real numbers. In fact, so far all of our functions have a domain of all real numbers except for rational functions. All right, so that's all real numbers. Now, what do these two domains have in common? Well, I'm going to go ahead and graph the two. That's f and that's g. So what do they have in common? Well, everything except for 3. And so our domain is going to be negative infinity to 3, union 3 to infinity. All right, and we'll stop right there.